Hello everyone, I welcome you to this English class. Here we are studying this poem for students of class 10th. The name of the poem is Snake, written by D. H. Lawrence. And I am Ruchika Gupta. So here we will cover the explanation of the poem and the literary devices used in it. If you want to see the summary and the background of Snake, it is a separate video and the link is given in the description box below. So let us begin with this chapter. A snake came to my water trough on a hot, hot day and I in pajamas for the heat to drink there in the deep strange scented shade of the great dark carob tree I came down the steps with my pitcher. First of all we'll see the meanings. Water trough is a vessel which holds water like you can see here a big tub which is used to store water in it a water trough. The next word is carob tree. Here you can see this is a carob tree. It is a red flowered tree found in the Mediterranean area. Now as the poet lives in Sicily, which is a town located in Italy. We all know Italy is in the southern part of Europe and it is located near the Mediterranean Sea. So this tree, carob tree, is a particular type of tree like we have mango tree, lychee tree, banana tree. And this is found in the Mediterranean area. So this kind of tree was there in the garden. The next word is pitcher. Pitcher is a jug, a vessel, a container that you use to store water. And it is smaller than this water trough. Now over here in this stanza, the poet is introducing a snake. He says, a snake came to my water trough on a hot, hot day. And I in pajamas for the heat to drink there. So a snake visited the water trough in the poet's garden. And the poet was also there. He was wearing his pajamas. He was wearing his casual loungewear dress. Because it was very hot. He says it was a hot, hot day. Very hot day. And both of them were there at the water trough to drink water. Then he says in the deep strange scented shade of the great dark carob tree i came down the steps with my pitcher so he's saying that he walked towards the water trough he descended the steps and he was holding a pitcher a jug in his hands he was going to the water trough to fill this jug with water he says in the deep strange scented shade of the great dark carob tree now, in the garden where this water trough was kept, there was a huge dark carob tree planted. And he says that the entire garden was full of this strange fragrance of this carob tree. What is this? The deep, strange scented shade. Now, when there are trees, we all know the trees give us shade. So, the garden was full of this shade of the tree. And it was also full of the fragrance, the strange fragrance given out by this carob tree. So let us sum up this stanza. In this stanza, the poet says that it was an unusually hot day and he was wearing his pajamas. He was relaxing in his house. He and a snake, both of them, visited the water trough in the poet's garden to drink water. And he says that the garden was full of the shade of the great huge carob tree that was planted in the garden. And the fragrance of the carob tree was also there. Then he says he walked down the steps of his house towards the water trough and he was carrying a jug to fill with water. Now we will discuss the literary devices. First of all, as you can notice over here, I had told in the background of this poem that this poem does not have any rhyme. It is written in free verse and that we can see here there is no particular rhyme scheme in this stanza. Next, 
a very important literary device that is prominent in the entire poem is personification. In this poem, the poet has personified the snake. He has given human-like qualities to the snake. So this you can see throughout the poem. The next important device used in this stanza is repetition. Repetition can be a repeated use of any word or a sentence to lay emphasis on it. Here when he says on a hot, hot day, he is repeating the word hot in order to say that it was very hot, unusually hot day. The next device used here is transferred epithet. Transferred epithet. Now, first of all, what is transferred epithet? When you are using an adjective to describe something which is other than the noun along with which the adjective is used. Here when he says, strange scented shade. Now, actually, the scent is not of the shade, but the scent is of the carob tree, which is there in the garden. But when he says, strange scented shade, this is the use of transferred epithet. That means this adjective, strange scented, does not actually refer to the shade, but it refers to the carob tree. Next device used is alliteration. What is alliteration? Alliteration is the repetition of a consonant sound in two or more consecutive or nearby words. Here you can see alliteration, strange scented Sir sound is repeating in both these words. This is alliteration. Now we move ahead to the next answer. And must wait, must stand and wait, for there he was at the trough before me. He reached down from a fissure in the earth wall in the gloom and trailed his yellow brown slackness, soft bellied down over the edge of the stone trough and rested his throat upon the stone bottom and where the water had dripped from the tap in a small clearness. Now we will see the meanings. Fissure means a crack, a small crack in the wall. Yellow brown slackness means the slow moving yellow brown colored body of the snake. Slackness means slow moving and yellow brown is the color of the snake's body. Soft bellied down. Soft bellied down means the soft slippery body of the snake is turned towards the ground. His belly, the stomach of the snake when he crawls that faces the earth and that is why he is saying soft bellied down. So in this stanza the poet says and must wait, must stand and wait. For there he was at the trough before me. Now who is he? He is the snake. As I told you just now, the snake has been personified at many places. And here we can see one of those instances. The poet is saying that the snake was at the trough before me and so I was waiting for my turn. He was being very polite to the snake. He was treating the snake as a guest and he said that as the snake was there at the water trough before him, he was waiting for his turn. And then he is describing how the snake crawled towards the water trough and drank water. He says, he reached down from a fissure in the earth wall in the gloom. Gloom here means darkness. So the poet is saying that the snake crawled out from the earth wall. From the wall behind which was the earth. So earth here is the home of the snake. So the snake crawled out of its home. Out of the crack in the wall. Which was full of darkness. And he trailed. He crawled. His yellow brown colored slow moving body. Which had his soft belly facing towards the ground. And he crawled on the edge of the stone trough. So the water trough in the garden was made of stone. And 
the poet was very polite he stood there like a gentleman and he was watching the snake as the snake crawled out of the crack in the earth wall and slowly moved his yellow brown colored body on the edge of the trough made of stone and then he says the snake rested his throat upon the stone bottom so as the snake reached the edge of the trough he rested for a while he placed his neck he placed his throat on the edge of the stone trough and then he says where the water had dripped from the tap in a small clearness so here we can see how intelligent the snake is he reached to the clearest part of the water where the water was dripping from the tap there was a small puddle created which had the freshest water and there the snake started drinking that water so let us sum up this stanza here the poet says that he was very polite to the snake he treated the snake as a guest and as the snake was there at the water trough before him he waited for his turn then he describes how the snake crawled and reached the water trough and drank the water he says the snake came down from a crack in the earthy wall which was full of darkness and he moved his body slowly his yellow brown colored body slowly with his soft stomach facing the ground and he crawled on the edge of the trough made of stone and as he reached the edge of the trough he rested his throat on the bottom of the stone for a while and then where the water had dripped from the tap there was a small clear puddle the snake started drinking water from there now we come to the devices used in this stanza first of all there is anaphora whenever two or more consecutive lines in a poem begin with the same word that is the use of anaphora here and is repeated in these lines at the beginning of all of them this is anaphora the next device again we can see alliteration that is used in this stanza so let us see where all we can see alliteration first of all from a fisher here first sound is repeating next slackness soft bellied so sound is repeating and then where the water here were sound is repeating now we move ahead to the next stanza he sipped with his straight mouth softly drank through his straight gums into his slack long body silently someone was before me at my water trough and i like a second comer waiting he lifted his head from his drinking as cattle do now here the meanings slack means loose and lazy slow and we can make out what is the second comer a person who is second in turn a person who has someone before him who has reached a place again over here you can see the use of he and his referring to the snake again there is personification so here the poet is telling us how the snake drank water he says he sipped with his straight mouth we all know how is the shape of the mouth of the snake it is long and straight and he says he sipped water and he says he drank softly through his straight gums so he says that the snake drank softly through his straight gums into his slack long body silently so he saying that the snake was very peaceful the snake did not pose any threat to the poet it was very calm and relaxed and it was just drinking water softly gently and it seemed that the snake was quite harmless then he says someone was before me at my water trough who is the someone again the snake so the snake is being personified once again 
and the poet says that the snake was before the poet at the water trough and the poet was like a person who is second in turn and so he was waiting for his turn like we wait in a queue and further he says that the snake lifted his head from his drinking as cattle do so he's comparing the snake to cattle so he's saying just like cattle raises its head while it's drinking water similarly the snake also took a break and the snake lifted his head while the snake was drinking water so in this stanza the poet is further describing the way the snake drank the water he says that the snake was quite harmless and it sipped water with its straight mouth it drank the water through the gums into the loose and lazy body of the snake and it was very silent quite harmless it just drank water it was just quenching its thirst and he says that the snake was there at his water trough before him and he was very gentle very calm and waited for his turn like a person who is a second comer and he stood in a queue he was waiting for his turn he was waiting for the snake to finish drinking water so that he could go and fill his pitcher and drink water and then the snake also took a break he paused from drinking water and he lifted his head from his drinking just like cattle do when they are drinking water now in this stanza there is a use of simile simile is a comparison between two things using like or as simile is used at two places firstly here and i like a second comer so the poet is comparing himself to a second comer to a person who is second in turn and is waiting in a queue secondly simile is used in this line when he says he lifted his head from his drinking as cattle do so he has used as and he is comparing the snake to cattle he says that just like cattle takes a pause while cattle is drinking water and lifts its head similarly the snake also took a break and lifted its head while it was drinking water then there is a use of alliteration also which are the instances where we can see the use of alliteration here we can see sipped straight sir sound is very prominent even in this line softly straight gum slack silently sir is used at many places the next use of alliteration is her he lifted his head her sound is repeating now we move ahead and looked at me vaguely as drinking cattle do and flickered his two forked tongue from his lips and mused a moment and stooped and drank a little more being earth brown earth golden from the burning bowels of the earth on the day of sicilian july with etna smoking so first of all we'll see the meanings vaguely means carelessly so the snake was not very careful and he did not notice that the poet was standing there flickered means moved moved very fast bowels means stomach and here bowels refers to the core of the earth the depth of the earth so we can say the stomach of the earth the interior depth so over here the poet is saying that as the snake was drinking water the snake looked at the poet vaguely carelessly because he did not notice the poet was there he just had a passing glance at him and while he was drinking water he moved his two forked tongue from his lips and mused a moment mused a moment means he paused for a while and it seemed as if the snake was thinking something what is a two forked tongue this is the shape of the tongue of the snake the the end of the tongue is like this so this has two forks this is what the poet is saying two forked tongue 
and then after pausing for a while the snake again bent forward and drank a little more water so the snake was quenching its thirst he was drinking as much water as it could then he says being earth brown earth golden from the burning bowels of the earth on the day of sicilian july with etna smoking sicilian july refers to the month of july in sicily which is extremely hot so the poet wants to refer to the weather conditions in sicily in the month of july when he says sicilian july and what is etna smoking this refers to mount etna mount etna is located in sicily and why is he saying etna smoking now this mount etna is an active volcano and so when this volcano erupts the poet is referring it to as etna smoking so he says that when there is a lot of fire coming out of this volcano out of this mount etna it is etna smoking so here in these two lines what is the poet saying he is saying that as the snake lived in the depths of the earth in the burning bowels of the earth in the stomach of the earth which was burning and which was full of this volcanic fire which erupted from mount etna that was the reason for the color of the snake's body he says that the snake was earth brown and earth golden in color because the snake lived in the depth of the earth in the burning bowels of the earth which had this huge immense fire in it which often erupted out of this mount etna and when it erupted when this volcano erupted he is referring to it as etna smoking so let us sum up this stanza the poet says that the snake took a break while it was drinking and moved its head all around and looked at the poet also but looked at him carelessly the snake did not notice that the poet was standing there and then like humans also when they're drinking water they take a break and then they smack their lips in order to taste the water similarly the snake also took out his tongue two forked tongue because his because the shape of its tongue was like this so the snake took out its tongue from its lips and paused for a while it felt that it had drank some water and then after that pause it again went forward and drank some more water and then the poet says that the snake lived in the burning bowels of the earth the snake lived in the interiors of the earth which was full of volcanic fire and so it was earth brown earth golden in color and then he says that on that day of sicilian july on that day on that very hot day which was the typical weather in the month of july in sicily which had the popular mount etna which was a volcanic mountain and would erupt very often so the poet wants to verify this fact that the interior of the earth in sicily was burning hot because there was this mount etna over there which was a volcanic mountain and it would erupt often and all this burning material from the interior of the earth would flow out of this mountain very often now let us discuss the literary devices used in this stanza there is simile again over here the snake has been compared to a cattle he says that the snake looked at me vaguely as drinking cattle do next there is alliteration here flickered forked for sound is repeating mused moment mer sound is repeating burning bowels ber sound is repeating the next device is anaphora again in these three lines and word is repeating at the beginning this is anaphora
the voice of my education said to me, he must be killed. For in Sicily, the black, black snakes are innocent, the gold are venomous. And voices in me said, if you were a man, you would take a stick and break him now and finish him off. Now here venomous means poisonous, full of poison. So what is the poet saying over here? He says the voice of my education. What do we mean by the voice of my education? What we have learned in school, your upbringing. What you have been taught for all these years. From childhood till attaining adulthood. You have been told that black colored snakes are not harmful. They are innocent. They are not poisonous. But the golden colored snakes. Just like the snake who had come to the poet's water trough. The golden colored snake are venomous. They are considered to be poisonous. They are harmful. They are a threat. And so the poet says that his inner conscious, the voices of his education were again and again forcing him to kill the snake. They were alerting him. They were telling him that this is a golden colored snake and golden colored snakes are poisonous and so you must kill the snake. And then again he says, Voices in me said, if you were a man, you would take a stick and break him now and finish him off. So this is what his inner conscious was telling him. His inner conscious was saying that if you are a man, that means if you are brave enough, if you have that much courage in you, then what you should do? You should kill the snake, pick up a stick and break the snake into two pieces and kill him. So here the poet is saying that the snake did not seem to be harmful. The snake was not a threat because it was very peaceful and was just drinking water. But still, his inner conscious, his voice of education, the upbringing that he had from his childhood was again and again telling him that in Sicily, the black colored snakes are supposed to be innocent. They are not harmful. They are not poisonous. But the gold colored snakes are poisonous. They are harmful. And so, if you are brave enough, if you have that much courage and strength, you should pick up a stick and cut the snake into two pieces and kill it. Now we will see the literary devices used here. Here you can see repetition. The word black has been repeated twice because the poet wants to say there is a difference between black colored snake and gold colored snake. He is saying that the black colored snakes are innocent, they are harmless but the gold colored snakes are harmful, they are poisonous. And so he has repeated this word black. Let us proceed further. But must I confess how I liked him? How glad I was he had come like a guest in quiet to drink at my water trough and depart peaceful, pacified and thankless into the burning bowels of this earth. Was it cowardice that I dared not kill him? Was it perversity that I longed to talk to him? Was it humility to feel so honoured? Now over here, perversity means unacceptable behaviour. Something which is unusual. When the poet is saying that I longed to talk to him. The poet wanted to talk to a snake. Now this is an unusual behaviour. And that is what perversity means. In this stanza, the poet is confessing. He is accepting something. He is feeling guilty about it. And what is that? He is attracted to the snake. He says, I liked him. And this is the confession that the poet is making. He is saying that he was attracted to the snake. He was very glad. He was happy that there was a guest at his water trough. And he says that the snake, he, personification of the snake. He says he was very happy and glad that the snake was like a guest. And he had come to his water trough to drink water and quench his thirst. And 
the snake wanted to just go away back into its home into the burning bowels of the earth into the depth of the earth which was very hot extremely hot and the snake was harmless the snake did not mean to harm the poet the snake was peaceful pacified relaxed and it just came to quench its thirst and then after that the poet is pondering over his feelings he is thinking that was he a coward did he lack courage that is why he did not want to kill the snake or was he having an unacceptable behavior his mind was thinking of something which is not considered to be acceptable in the society that is that he wanted to talk to the snake or was he very humble very down to earth feeling very honored that he had a guest at his water trough and so he did not want to kill the guest kill the snake so in this stanza the poet confesses that he liked the snake he was attracted to the snake to its majesty to its style and for the first time he felt that the snake was harmless which was contrary to his upbringing to his inner voice to what he had learned in his education he says he was very glad that the snake was like a guest he was a guest at the poet's water trough and had come to drink water and would go away would return back to his home in the depth of the earth after drinking water and satisfying its thirst the snake did not mean to harm the poet he was very peaceful relaxed and would simply drink water and return back home but later the poet ponders over his feelings he thinks that was he coward did he not have that much bravery and courage to kill the snake and that is why he did not hit it or was he perverse did he have any unacceptable behavior he was attracted towards the snake he wanted to talk to the snake and that is why he did not kill him or was he simply so humble so down to earth welcoming hospitable to his guest feeling honored to have a guest at his water trough and that is why he did not want to kill a guest and so he did not hit the snake so the poet has three thoughts over his reaction the poet did not want to kill the snake and so he was thinking that probably maybe he was coward he lacked that much courage and so he did not kill the snake or maybe he was perverse he was having unacceptable unusual feelings towards the snake he wanted to befriend the snake or he was simply humble and hospitable towards a guest at his water trough now we'll see the literary devices first of all there is alliteration let us find the instances of alliteration in this stanza here peaceful pacified per sound is repeating burning bowels per sound is repeating then there is a use of simile here you can see the word like how glad i was he had come like a guest so the snake is being compared to a guest then there is another device of repetition this line into the burning bowels of this earth this is being repeated earlier also in a previous stanza the same line had been used why is the poet repeating this burning bowels of this earth he wants to lay emphasis on this that the inner core of the earth the home of the snake was burning hot it was very very hot now we move ahead i felt so honored and yet those voices if you were not afraid you would kill him and truly i was afraid i was most afraid but even so honored still more that he should seek my hospitality hospitality means a warm reception a welcome by the host to the guest so as the poet considered the snake to be a guest he was being hospitable to the snake now here the poet says 
he felt honored he was honored because he had a guest at his water trough and he was honored to have a guest at his water trough maybe it was a snake that did not bother him and then he says again and again his inner conscious was prompting him was pricking him and it was telling him if you were not afraid you would kill him so his inner conscious was saying that you are afraid of the snake you are scared and that is why you are not killing him you are not brave enough and so the poet accepts this he says i was afraid i was most afraid so the poet says that yes i lacked courage i was not brave enough to kill the snake that is why i did not hit it but he says even so honored still more so he's saying that although he was afraid but more than that he was honored he was being a good host he was being hospitable to the snake and he was feeling honored to have a guest at his water trough and he was honored that he should seek my hospitality so the poet was being a good host and that is why as the snake was a guest at his water trough the poet did not want to kill it so in this stanza the poet says that he was honored to have a guest at his water trough and the guest was the snake but again and again the voices of his inner conscious were pricking him and saying that if you were brave enough you would kill the snake and then the poet confesses he says that yes i was afraid i was afraid of the snake but more than that i was being a good host and as the snake was a guest at my water trough i did not want to kill him now the devices used here first of all there is anaphora repetition of the same word at the start of two or more consecutive lines here you can see the word and is being repeated secondly there is repetition i was afraid i was most afraid so the poet is repeating this in order to lay emphasis he wants to stress on this fact that he was very afraid of the snake now the next stanza from out the dark door of the secret earth he drank enough and lifted his head dreamily as one who has drunken and flickered his tongue like a forged knight on the air so black seeming to lick his lips here dark door of the secret earth is a reference to the crack in the wall from where the snake came out here you can see this is a crack in the wall and this crack is the dark door of the secret earth so the poet wants to say that this was a way into the earth which was secret otherwise we don't know what is there inside the earth it is a big secret for us and this crack was a door that led to this secret that is what he is saying from dark door of the secret earth so the poet is saying from out the dark door of the secret earth so he wants to say that the snake crawled out of this crack which led into the secretive earth and the snake drank enough the snake drank enough water and in the middle of it the snake lifted his head dreamily as one who has drunken so here the poet is comparing the snake to a drunk person a person who is intoxicated who has had an alcoholic drink so he is saying that just like a person who is under the influence of alcohol lifts his head dreamily similarly the snake also seemed to be intoxicated by the water that he drank and he lifted his head dreamily and then what did the snake do it flickered his tongue like a forked knight on the air just now we had studied that the shape of the tongue of the snake is forked the edges are like this and so he says that the snake once again moved his tongue like a forked knight on the air so black so he's saying that the tongue of the snake was black in color 
and it seemed as if the tongue was like a forked knight. It was black so it was like knight and the shape was like a fork. And it seemed as if the snake was licking his lips after drinking the water. So in this stanza first of all the poet says that the snake had crawled out of the crack which was a dark door into the secretive earth. Then he says the snake drank enough water and in the middle of it the snake lifted its head dreamily as if it was drunk, it was intoxicated and the snake moved its tongue out of its mouth onto its lips. It licked its lips and the snake's black colored tongue was like a forked night on the air. Now we will see the devices used here. Again there is anaphora and word is repeating at the beginning of these lines. Then there is alliteration also. Let us see the instances of alliteration used here. Dark door. D sound is repeating. Lick his lips. L sound is repeating. Then there is the use of simile. There are two instances. Firstly, lifted his head dreamily as one who has drunk. So the snake is being compared to a drunk person. The second instance of simile is flickered his tongue like a forked night on the air. So the snake's tongue is compared to night. He says that the tongue was black in color just like night and the shape of the tongue was forked like this. It had two edges. Now let us read the next set of lines. And looked around like a god, unseeing, into the air. And slowly turned his head. And slowly, very slowly, as if thrice a dream, proceeded to draw his slow length curving round and climb again the broken bank of my wall face. What is wall face? The outer part of the wall. That part of the wall... From where? Through a crack the snake had come out into the garden. So here the poet is saying, looked around like a god unseen into the air. So whom is he talking about? He is talking about the snake. He is saying that after drinking the water and licking its lips, what did the snake do? The snake looked around in the air and he was just looking like a god. So, from this line, what do we come to know about the poet? He is treating the snake equivalent to God. He is treating the snake similar to God. He is saying that just like God, the snake also looked around in the air. So, he is giving such a respectful position to the snake. And then he says, slowly turned his head. And slowly, very slowly, as if thrice a dream. So he's saying that the snake turned its head very, very slowly. That's why he's repeating this word slowly. And he says it was as if the snake is in a dream. So what he wants to tell us that as the snake has drunk water, it has quenched its thirst, it is satisfied, it is feeling dreamy, sleepy, relaxed. And that is why it turned its head very slowly. And then the snake proceeded to draw his slow length curving round. What does this mean? Have you ever seen a snake crawling maybe in a movie? It moves like this in a zigzag position. So he is saying that the length of the snake was moving slowly and it was curving round as the snake was moving ahead. And climb again the broken bank of my wall face. So now the snake is going back to its home. And so it is crawling on the wall of the garden. And it is going towards the crack in the wall from where it had come out. So here the poet tells us that 
After drinking water, how did the snake behave? First of all, it turned its head in the air and looked around just like God does. And then, very slowly, the snake turned its head and it seemed as if the snake was very relaxed and satisfied after drinking water because it seemed as if the snake was in a dream. And then, slowly, the snake curved its body as it crawled ahead towards the crack in the wall from where it had come out in the garden to drink water. So the snake was going back to its home. Now the literary devices in this, first of all there is anaphora. Here you can see in all these lines and is repeating, this is anaphora. The next device is simile. In the first line, the poet is comparing the snake to God. He says, and looked around like a god. So the snake is being compared to God. Then there is repetition. Here you can see the word slowly is being repeated three times because he wants to say that the snake was turning its head very, very slowly. Then there is alliteration also. Let us see where alliteration has been used. Broken bank. Here burr sound is repeating in these words. Now we move ahead to the next set of lines. And as he put his head into that dreadful hole. And as he slowly drew up. Snake easing his shoulders and entered farther. A sort of horror. A sort of protest against his withdrawing into that horrid black hole, deliberately going into the blackness and slowly drawing himself after, overcame me, now his back was turned. So here the poet is saying, as he, and who is this he over here? The snake. Once again, the snake is being personified. He says, as he put his head into that dreadful hole, that dreadful hole is the crack in the wall from where the snake had come out and now the snake was going back into the crack of the wall. So he says that as the snake entered this crack and as he slowly drew up, snake easing his shoulders and entered farther. Now this crack was quite small, very narrow crack in the wall and the snake has this ability to twist and turn and mold his body. That is why he's saying snake easing his shoulders. So the snake twisted itself because it wanted to enter this narrow crack of the wall. And he says as the snake crawled further into the hole, there was a sort of horror and protest in the mind of the poet. He was horrified and he was protesting against the snake's withdrawing into that Horrid black hole. Horrid is something horrible, something which you dislike. So what is the poet saying here? That when he saw that the snake is going back into its home, the snake is going back into the dark earth through this crack in the wall, he was horrified. He was protesting. He was against this. He did not want the snake to go back. He says, deliberately going into the blackness, and slowly drawing himself after. So he's saying that the snake is once again going into the darkness, into the blackness, into the dark secretive earth. And the poet is against this. He is horrified. He does not want the snake to go back into this dark secretive earth. And so he says this horror and protest overcame him as the snake's back was turned to him. As the snake was retreating into its home, obviously the snake was facing towards the interior of the wall. So the snake's back was there towards the poet. And that is what the poet is saying, that his back was turned. So the poet wants to say that now as he was not facing the snake, he was no longer treating the snake to be a guest and being hospitable and polite to the snake. Now he was just horrified and he was against this thing that the snake was going back to his home. So he did something 
to show his opposition as now the snake was not facing him so he could do that act what he did we'll read further so over here now the snake has drunk the water he is satisfied and now he is going back to his home so really the snake is absolutely harmless he has not harmed the poet in any way the snake simply came out of the crack of the wall crawled up to the water trough drank water looked around drank some more water and then went back to the crack in the wall and the poet says that as the snake entered this crack of the wall and crawled further the poet was horrified he was against this thing he did not want the snake to go back into the dark secretive earth and now as the snake was not facing him the snake had turned his back towards the poet the poet did something in order to show his protest let us read further to know that but before we proceed further let us see the literary devices used in this stanza again we get to see anaphora over here same and word is repeating at the start of these lines next there is repetition a sort of a sort of is repeated because the poet wants to say that he had mixed reaction mixed feelings when he saw that the snake was going back into his home he was horrified and he was against this thing and he did not want that the snake should go back into the dark secretive earth now we go to the next set of lines i looked round i put down my pitcher i picked up a clumsy log and threw it at the water trough with a clatter i think it did not hit him but suddenly that part of him that was left behind convulsed in undignified haste convulsed means to move violently when something unexpected happens that is the reaction that is caused with the person he moves violently so over here we get to see the reaction of the poet as the poet was horrified he was against this fact that the snake should go back into the dark secretive earth what did he do he looked around he kept his pitcher down on the earth and he picked up a piece of wood he picked up a clumsy log and then what did he do he hit the snake with it he threw the log at the snake with a clatter clatter is the sound that was produced when this log hit the wall and then he says that this log of wood did not hit the snake him here refers to the snake so this log of wood that the poet threw towards the water trough did not hit the snake but the snake sensed that and the snake reacted what was the reaction of the snake suddenly the part of the snake's body that was left out out of the wall moved violently in undignified haste so how did the snake react it moved its body violently you can also say that the snake wriggled very fast as a reaction as it sensed danger the snake reacted by wriggling its body the that part of the body that was left out of the crack out of the wall wriggled very fast and it hurried into the wall so here we get to see the reaction of the poet the poet did not want the snake to go back into the dark secretive earth so what did he do he picked up a piece of wood and threw it at the water trough with a clatter with a sound and a sound was produced as the log of wood hit the water trough although the log of wood did not hit the snake but the snake sensed danger and it reacted it wriggled the part of the body that was out in the garden and moved into the wall hurriedly now we'll see the literary devices used here first of all there is on mat pia on mat 
Utopia is the use of sound words in poetry. Here, clatter is the sound produced when this log of wood hit the water trough. This is on Madhya. So that's all for this, and we move ahead. Rithed like lightning and was gone into the black hole. The earth lipped fissure in the wall front, at which, in the intense still noon, I stared with fascination, and immediately I regretted it. I thought, how paltry, how vulgar, what a mean act. Here, rithed means wiggled, move very fast, violently. Paltry means small, worthless. So here further, the poet is adding up to the reaction of the snake. He says the snake wiggled like lightning. So the snake moved its body very fast and was gone, and it disappeared into the wall through that crack, into the black hole, the earth-lipped fissure in the wall front. Now the poet is referring to the crack as. black hole and why is he saying so because the crack in the wall leads to the dark secret earth and the earth behind the wall is black in color it is secretive it is dark that is why he is referring it to as black hole because we don't know anything about it it is mysterious and then he says the earth lipped fissure in the wall front fissure is a small crack or opening and earth lip means that the lips the edges of the crack led into the earth so please look at this illustration that i have drawn here now this is the crack in the wall and the edges of this crack are the lips which lead into the earth which are made of earth and that is why he says earth lipped fissure i hope that's clear to you in the wall front in the wall of the garden at which in the intense still noon i stared with fascination so why was the poet staring with fascination at this crack in the wall because that was the place from where the snake had come out and that was the place where just now once again the snake had retreated to and the poet was so fascinated with the snake that he stared at that crack in the intense still noon so he says that although it was very hot but still he was so attracted towards the snake that he stared at that wall at that crack in the wall with fascination he wanted that the snake should come out he did not want that the snake should go back into that secretive earth and then he says immediately i regretted it what was it that he regretted he regretted his act of hitting the snake and he felt how paltry how small how worthless he was he had done such an immoral and mean act by hitting the snake with the log and now the poet is repenting he is repenting for the sin of hitting the snake with the log so as a reaction when the snake sensed danger it moved violently and just like lightning it disappeared into the crack of the wall and he refers to the crack of the wall as a black hole because it is dark and secretive and then he says that the earth lived fissure the crack which had the edges of earth into that the snake disappeared and he says that although it was very hot still he kept on staring at this crack in the wall with fascination he was so much attracted towards the snake and the crack was the place where the snake had went into and so he was staring at it and then immediately the poet regretted his act of hitting the snake with the log of wood 
he was repenting and he felt that he had done a small and worthless act he was mean and immoral so he is repenting for his sin of hitting the snake with a log of wood now the devices used in this stanza first of all there is simile line 1 he says rithed like lightning so he is comparing the movement of the snake to lightning next device is alliteration here like lightning l sound is repeating then there is repetition here we get to see how word is repeating this is repetition the next set of lines i despised myself and the voices of my accursed human education and i thought of the albatross and I wished he would come back my snake for he seemed to me again like a king like a king in exile uncrowned in the underworld now due to be crowned again despised means hated disliked exile means the state of being sent away from one's territory to be sent out of your country out of your territory that is exile So here the poet further adds on to his reaction he was feeling guilty and he says i hated myself and the voices of my accursed human education so he says that the voices the voices of his inner conscience that were forcing him to hit the snake and kill the snake were accursed they were not good they had a curse on them because it was due to these voices due to this inner conscience of his that he had hit the snake with a log of wood and that is why he hated himself for this he was repenting and then he was reminded of the albatross here he is referring to the poem rhyme of the ancient mariner which we have just covered just like in this poem the ancient mariner is repenting for his act of killing the albatross similarly the poet is repenting for hitting the snake with a log of wood and he wishes that the snake comes out of this crack in the wall because the poet feels that the snake is like a king the snake is the king of the world and he is living in exile he is living in the dark interiors of the earth away from his territory because the poet feels that the snake should live on the earth not inside the earth so he is saying that the snake is like a king in exile because the snake is not living in his territory he is living out of his territory and he says the snake is uncrowned in the underworld the underworld where the snake is living at present there the snake is not the king because the snake is the king of the outer world and so he wants that the snake should come out of the crack and he wants to crown the snake once again as the king of the world so here in these lines the poet is repenting for his act he hates himself for hitting the snake with a log of wood and he feels that he is similar to the ancient mariner just like the ancient mariner was repenting his act of killing the albatross similarly the poet is repenting for his act of hitting the snake with a log of wood he wants the snake should come out of the crack and once again live in his own territory because he feels that the snake is like a king and at present the snake is living in exile he is living out of his territory he is not the king of the underworld but he should come out in the outer world and the poet wants to crown the snake once again as the king of the world the devices used here are allusion allusion is the reference to a well known historical character or place here albatross is an allusion he is referring to the albatross in the rhyme of the ancient mariner then there is simile here he says he seemed to me again like a king like a king in exile 
So here, the poet is comparing the snake to a king in exile. The next set of lines, And so, I missed my chance with one of the lords of life. And I have something to expiate, a pettiness. Expiate means make amends for. Something you want to make amends for, you have committed a sin, you have accepted that, you have confessed and now you want to make amends for it. So here the poet says that he missed his chance with one of the lords of life. So he is referring to the snake as a lord of life. So that is the high position that the poet is given to the snake. And he says that he has something to expiate. He has something to make amends for. He wants to redeem the sin that he has committed. And the sin is a petty act. A mere vulgar act of hitting the snake. So here finally the poet ends his poem on a sad note. He is guilty. He is repenting for his sin. For the act of hitting the snake. And he refers to the snake as the lord of life. That I have committed a sin and I have to make amends for it. And the sin that he has committed is the petty vulgar act of hitting the snake. The devices used in these lines, first of all there is anaphora, a game and is repeated at the start of the lines. Then there is hyperbole. Hyperbole is the use of exaggeration. Here when the poet says lords of life. This is hyperbole. He is exaggerating. He is referring to the snake as the lord of life. This is exaggeration. Then there is alliteration also. Here, lords of life. L sound is repeating. So with this, we have covered this poem. I hope you have understood it well. Thank you for watching this. And for more such videos, do subscribe to English Academy.